This is Channel 2, the 10 o'clock news. Good evening. Chicago police have filed murder charges tonight against a Southside man accused of setting fire to an apartment building to get rid of his family. Seven people died in that fire, including the suspect's wife and their two-year-old son. 26-year-old Madison Hobley is charged with seven counts of murder, and authorities plan to ask a county grand jury to indict Hobley on arson charges as well. Susan Wallace reports on the tragic fire and its bitter aftermath. The fire raced through the building as its 30 occupants were sound asleep. The dead were found in the hallways of the upper floors, trapped by the smoke and flames. Other residents jumped from their apartment windows. Just panicked. Just snatched, put this stuff on and jumped on out the window. And these two guys fell down behind me and they fell on top of me. And then the lady who was pregnant, she fell down. But she, she didn't have anything to break her fall, so she went face down on the sidewalk. Fire Commissioner Lou Galante says there were smoke detectors throughout the building, but the alarms may have prompted residents to panic. This is one case where smoke detectors worked against us because the people were warned, came out of the hallway, and were caught by the set fire. In the midst of the chaos, some residents stayed in their apartments and waited for help. You know, I was just sitting in the window. And I guess the Lord was just telling me to just be calm. And, uh, and I just, just sat there until the fire department came and they got me out of the window. By late morning, investigators had determined that this fire was set. And police were convinced they had their arsonist, 26-year-old Madison Hobley. He admitted that he set the fire. He admitted purchasing the, the gasoline at a uh, gas station at 83rd and Cottage. Uh, the motive for the fire was uh, he was involved in a marital triangle with another woman and uh, the other woman wanted him to leave his wife and child and he didn't want to leave his wife and child because he was afraid they were going to go with someone else. On his way to jail tonight, Hobley denied confessing to the crime and said police had the wrong man. I did not do it. They have the wrong person. At Area 3 Police Headquarters, Susan Wallace, Channel 2 News. In national news tonight, President Reagan looks like he is all ready to go home. He is still in the hospital following that prostate surgery, but he appeared at his hospital window today telling reporters he feels just fine and that he hopes to go home by Thursday. Doctors report the president is making an excellent recovery from yesterday's surgery. Tissues removed during the operation found to be benign, and a CAT scan tonight shows no signs of cancer. Mr. Reagan felt well enough today to conduct a little business. He met with top officials to discuss the new Congress and his budget, a $1 trillion budget that is now tops on the agenda as the 100th Congress convenes on Capitol Hill. The budget calls for deep, deep cuts in federal aid to cities, which could spell trouble, of course, for Chicago. But as our Mike Parker reports from Washington tonight, those cuts face stiff opposition from the new Democratic majority. Defend the Constitution of the United States all 435 members of the House of Representatives were sworn in today. So were senators starting their six-year terms. There were 34 of them, including Democrat Alan Dixon of Illinois. Despite the pomp and spirit of celebration, there's deep concern among many big city lawmakers about the impact of proposed Reagan cuts in urban programs. Chicago could be hard hit if the Reagan budget is passed as is. The spending plan would cut $202.8 million in CTA and RTA operating maintenance funds in the six-county area, over $40 million for housing, more than $20 million in community development or service programs. Urban renewal projects would be cut entirely, and much of the funding could be lost for a new Southwest Rapid Transit line before it even starts. Mayor Washington says this budget could cripple the city of Chicago. This budget, in my opinion, is a breach of contract with the cities and deserves to be DOA or dead on arrival. The mayor's budget director, Sharon Gilliam, says if it's approved, the budget could mean big cuts in city services and a possible increase in local taxes. I have only three choices. Either we continue to get some federal subsidies for our tax dollars, or we provide the services with our own local dollars, or we don't provide the services. Chicago lawmakers in Washington are saying they won't let that happen. No, I guarantee you that it will not happen. This is only the first skirmish in a budget battle that could go on for another five months. Both Democrats and the Reagan administration are promising to play for keeps. Reporting live from Capitol Hill, Mike Parker, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Michael. Let's pick up where we left you last night. A man who barricaded himself in an apartment in Mount Prospect for 16 hours, now being held at Cook County Jail, 
on a half million dollar bond. 24 year old Billy Griffin surrendered to police early this morning after talking by telephone to the police throughout the night. The standoff began when Griffin allegedly fired through the door of his apartment at police officers. One officer was hit by a bullet, but his bulletproof vest prevented any injury. Police say Griffin was depressed after breaking up with his girlfriend. He's been charged with attempted murder and aggravated battery. A young hostage set free was cool as a cucumber today after an eight-hour ordeal at the Dallas airport. Ten-year-old Mike Caruso was snatched from a gate and held at gunpoint by a man demanding to go to Egypt. I told him I wanted to go to Egypt, but, but not this way. Have nightmares about this? Actually, no, because he was kind of a nice guy. <laughs> Authorities say the alleged gunman surrendered when he was duped into believing he could have safe passage out of the United States. He's behind bars tonight. He is charged with kidnapping and terrorism. <laughs> Still ahead on the Channel 2 News at 10 o'clock tonight, a former Chicago school teacher takes over as the head of the Chicago labor movement. And also, live report on the wild hunt for a cougar at O'Hare. And a look at a spectacular heavenly show unfolding in a galaxy far, far away. Insane! My audio and video prices are so low, no one can go lower! At Appliance Warehouse, our prices are almost close to wholesale. You can't do better than that. No matter what they claim... The competition's coming for me because I got the best stereo prices in town! Just remember the asterisk, because nobody but nobody sells for less than Highland. Let's talk fruit cocktail. Let's see how all the fruit cocktail compares to the big name brand. They're both packed with big chunks of juicy pineapple, luscious peaches, tempting pears, and bunches of grapes and cherries, all rated choice quality. The only difference is how Aldi squeezes the price. Aldi, just 49 cents every day. Aldi, the stock-up store. Yours is an American family, well-informed, 2.6 children, plus 30% tax bracket. Like your fellow citizens, you find taxes taxing. Some breakthrough advice. In place of the family dog, we suggest the family cat. His name is Dreyfus. Dreyfus is king of tax-exempt bond funds with a wide, comforting choice of tax-free, high-yield investments. Man's best friend is his Dreyfus tax-exempt fund. The Chicago Federation of Labor has a new president tonight, Robert Healy, former head of the Chicago Teachers Union. He succeeds Ed Brabeck, who died in November. 850 Federation delegates unanimously elected Healy tonight after Healy's only opponent dropped out of the race. Healy says his main goals are to stop unions from fighting over new memberships and to help unions change with the times. Nobody's stopping any fighting in politics tonight. Mayoral candidate Jane Byrne off and running as part of what she calls a new higher profile campaign strategy. She invited the media to join her tonight at a Serbian Christmas Eve celebration on the Northwest side. She says that her strategists say that Jane Byrne plans to hold more news conferences in the coming weeks. A spokesman says that one of the reasons Byrne waited to make her campaign more public is because she wanted to know exactly who she'll be running against in the Democratic primary. Now they say it looks like Harold Washington will be her only opponent. They predict Tom Hines will drop out of the race this weekend. The mayoral candidate endorsed by the Republican Party, meanwhile, Donald Hyder, was also out stumping tonight. At an appearance in the 7th Ward, he promised that as he campaigns around the city, there will be, as he says, no forgotten wards. Spend the time with you. I'm taking this campaign into all 50 wards, all the wards that have been neglected because of this endless conflict. And I'm going to be going door to door and talking to people as such as yourself, listening to you, hearing your problems, hearing your views, presenting my own views of what we can do together to make this city a truly world-class city. Hyder says the so-called council wars has left many areas of the city neglected and forgotten. State police officials are looking into some point raised last night in Walter's perspective. Walter reported that an increase in Illinois traffic deaths last year was being partially blamed on the shortage of state troopers. And then he showed two state troopers working as traffic reporters over at WGN Radio. Illinois Police Superintendent Lemutis Nargalenis says the troopers are supposed to be more than just traffic reporters. They're also supposed to provide traffic 
and safety tips. He says the troopers may be pulled off the air if that is not being done. There is some big game hunting going on at O'Hare Airport tonight following the escape of some live cargo from an airplane cage. Brian Rooney is at the airport now and joins us with details. Okay, Walter, unfortunately, we have to tell you it was rather small game involved, although it was two wild cougars. Apparently, what we're told here is that there was a couple of wild cougars that were bound for a circus somewhere in the Middle East that were being transported partly by Air Wisconsin, partly by Jordanian Airlines, somewhere in the transition when they were being taken out to their airplane. When they went to put the uh, little bit, uh, is a hand cage, really, that you would carry a dog in. When they went to put the cage in the Jordanian Airlines plane, only one cougar was there, and there was another cougar somewhere out there in O'Hare, loose, and they didn't want him loose for long. They, there were some alerts going on. They were afraid they might have to alert all the neighborhoods, but they located him uh, fairly quickly. He was in a ditch. They brought out some animal control officers. And I suppose, Walter and Bill, you could just chalk this up to another one of those O'Hare traveler stories when a couple of travelers miss their connection and they're going to have to spend the night here before they ship out in the morning. Probably just as upset with O'Hare as we are. He couldn't get out of there under two hours either. Uh, Bill, I, a, a big, big jet just went overhead, and I didn't hear what you just asked me. <laughs> well, it didn't, didn't amount to much anyway, <laughs> no, Brian. We'll let you come home. <laughs> Thank you. When we come back, Harry Volkman is going to be here with a forecast of cooler weather. And in perspective tonight, I'll show you why it pays to live on the right side of the street if you want to get things done in Chicago. Outrageous? Getting from here to there in an outrageous fashion was obviously not meant for everyone. This is not for me. There are some who would rather get around in a more elegant manner. Introducing the all-new design of the Pontiac Bonneville. A car designed for excellent handling with a sleek new look. The new Pontiac Bonneville from your Chicagoland, Northwest, and Indiana Pontiac dealers. Now wasn't that fun? Homegrown, made the way you make your own pizza. 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 A ladle on it, loaded up with lots of mozzarella on the pizza. Everyone talking about Channel 2's first edition? Because everyone is talking on first edition with Walter Jacobson and Don Craig. Weekdays at 4.30. Hertz announces great low weekly rates, like $99 a week here in Arizona. Or only $89 a week here in Hawaii. Oh yeah, honey? But well, what about $99 a week here in sunny California? Yeah! Or OJ. Only $59 a week here in sunny Florida. Brutal, Juice. Brutal. Hurts. You don't just rent a car. You rent a company. Some things get better with the passage of time, but business news just gets older. So the Wall Street Journal brings you the news you need every day, while there's still time for action, instead of just reaction. Of course, there are a lot of publications dedicated to business news, but the journal is also dedicated to a simple proposition that unlike some things, news does not improve with age. Astronomers in California are saying that they have detected evidence of the birth of a whole new galaxy far out in space. It's a very big baby, three times the size of our galaxy. The new galaxy is located far beyond our Milky Way. Astronomers say it's taken 12 billion years just for the light from the galaxy to travel all the way to the Earth. So don't get your hopes up. The new galaxy can be seen only by computers through the world's most light-sensitive optical telescopes at the Lick Observatory in California. The stars in the new galaxy are said to be as bright as one billion suns. Gee whiz. How, how about a name? Yeah. You want a name? This baby's name <laughs> is 3C326.1. Romantic. What a scientist. That's fantastic. We didn't, uh, we didn't get that record today, did we? No, we were close. We were 48, though, this afternoon, which is pretty good. Kind of a cool win. And for all those, the Serbians and Greeks celebrating Christmas tomorrow, we have uh, Hala Christuina, and uh, I'll get the other one in just a moment. Let's take a look at what those temperatures are at 10 o'clock tonight. O'Hare has 40. The lakefront and midway are 37 degrees. Our humidity tonight is running up to about 73%. Wind west 15 and the pressure 29.85. It's 
Christos se Rodi for the Serbian friends. And anyway, let's take a look now where that cold air is. You've been wondering where it is. It's in Moscow, Russia tonight, 21 below zero, and in Helsinki, Finland, 14 below. You may think that's a long way off, but a lot of times the cold that begins on the other side of the hemisphere eventually backs up across Scandinavia into North America. So let's watch it here about 10 days to 14 days from now, see if we get some of that cold. Across the United States, though, the westerlies are pushing the storm track well north of the border, and that drew this low up like that today that dumped snow in Minnesota, northern Iowa, northern Wisconsin, and upper Michigan is still snowing there tonight. But a little farther south, we'd have been buried in the snow, but there isn't anything in sight now, right through into the weekend. Cold front coming through here tonight, just bringing slightly cooler weather. The state getting most of the rain tonight is California, with heavy snows up in the Sierra Nevada, raining all down through the Los Angeles Basin, San Fernando Valley, and so forth. We'll have highs in the 30s the next couple of days, and probably for the next several. So let's see that forecast. Tonight, cloudy and colder. Snow flurries late, low 25. Winds northwest 15 to 25. We've got a little rain now at midway. Tomorrow, cloudy and colder, high 35. Winds northwest 8 to 15. Then for Thursday, cloudy early, becoming partly sunny late with a high of 32. Then for Friday, Saturday, looks pretty nice with highs around the low 30s with partly sunny right through Sunday. That's it, Bill. Thanks, Harry. As important as the winds and the temperatures are, there is more to be forecast these days than just the weather. There is politics to be forecast, and we'll leave that to Walter's perspective. <laughs> this being a year for, of a race for mayor, there is a lot of politics to be forecast, or you might say politics to be predicted, that there will be, for example, political rallies in all the wards and political promises by all the candidates. And I predict there will be political announcements to political reporters. The politicians telling reporters, as this one did yesterday, about all the good they're doing in City Hall and all the help they're providing in city neighborhoods, out in the streets where the people need the politicians to help in the 26th Ward on the west side where Alderman Luis Gutierrez lives and where the people need new streets and where they need new curbs as well. How's the city doing out there in the 26th? Getting those curbs fixed? The Alderman Gutierrez says, you bet we're getting them fixed. The best that a city can provide is coming from the city of Chicago, a city that responds when people call, like when Mr. Homeowner called, for example. He doesn't want us to use his real name, owner of that building in the middle there in Humboldt Park. He's been calling City Hall for two years about the condition of the curbs on his corner, but he couldn't get an answer for two years. While the curbs on the corner got worse and worse and worse until the alderman, Mr. Gutierrez, took the call. He's the one, he says, he and the mayor, who can get the City Hall crews into that neighborhood in Humboldt Park in the 26th Ward. When City Hall gets a call these days, says the alderman, the curbs get fixed. How's that for service? From the hall to Humboldt Park, $10,000 to fix those curbs. You can't beat that, except that those curbs in the park did not need to be fixed. Here's how they looked before they were fixed. It's the curbs across the street that are bad. Near Mr. Homeowner's house, they're the ones that are rotting away. Not those curbs in the parks for the $10,000. They were fine. Mr. Homeowner's curbs, Mr. Alderman, these curbs across the street, they're the ones that have been bad for two years and were supposed to have been fixed for the $10,000 and still need to be fixed. But keep calling, Mr. Homeowner, maybe in two more years after 200 more announcements to reporters. Hang in there, Mr. Homeowner. Maybe someday the city that works really will work. Consider that, Mr. Homeowner. But don't bet on it. This Wednesday, you're a winner at the Fredder Appliance Wednesday Winter Sale, where everything's coming up savings. TVs, stereos, appliances, low price in your favor. It's the jackpot with a super value 19-inch color TV with remote just $197. Come on ahead with this Magic Chef compact microwave oven, just $87. Be a winner this Wednesday only at the Fredder Appliance Wednesday Winter Sale. My low prices are a sure thing, especially this Wednesday. Ameritech Pages Plus, published by Donnelly Directory. 
There are urgent deadlines, important responsibilities, and long late night hours. It's your job, and you do it right. Because when work is done, there's a place to go. Open 24 hours a day, every day of the year. It's your Charlie Club, a healthy way to relieve life's tension and cope with stress. Charlie Club's the way to feel good, stay fit, and have fun. Take advantage of Charlie Club's two-year membership special. Just $100 down in small monthly payments gets you two full years of fun and fitness. Treat yourself to a healthier way of life. Come in now to the Charlie Club nearest you. Marshall Field's January Savings, the perfect place for hundreds of winter values. Save on a vast selection of women's fashions and accessories, including dresses, blouses, handbags, and shoes. Plus, you'll find fantastic values in Marshall Field's store for men, from business looks to basics at incredible savings. Discover hundreds of values for your home, like cookware, dinnerware, linens, and more. In fact, there's plenty of room to save. Now at Marshall Field's January Savings. Let's talk about the Bulls. They're not in first place, I know, but they should be. It seems like they win every well, game. Well, they're playing better than most people thought they would play. The Bulls won tonight on the road. It was 99-95 over Cleveland to go 16-15 and for the season. Michael Jordan tallied 27 tonight. One reason for the lower output was this man, rookie Ron Harper, who scored 22 and played some good defense against Jordan. He's on the front end of the break here. It was 92-91 Cleveland late when Jordan put Chicago up for good. A bomber from outside, 93-92 Bulls. And then they held the lead, and here was the key shot. 97-95 Bulls with seconds to play as John Paxson wrapped it up from the twilight zone. The Bulls a winner, 99-95. Elsewhere, the Knicks really surprised Atlanta. Milwaukee 124, New Jersey 112, and Indiana over San Antonio by two. And yes, the NCAA today announced that it will have its members vote on a possible national collegiate football title game beginning in 1989. Meanwhile, Bear defensive end Dan Hampton, who broke his season-long silence here on Channel 2 Saturday night, has a new vocation. He became a country and western disc jockey last night, as Jeannie reports. Losing wouldn't be so bad at all, but I'm always on a mountain when I fall. U.S. 99. Sam, we were with Dan Hampton of the Chicago Bears. Yes, just like we promised. <sighs> hey, Sam, how you doing? Doing pretty good. How you doing? Well, not too bad. I guess, uh, you know, it's... it's it is kind of tough to be out and, and talking a little bit tonight. Uh, obviously, after Saturday, a lot of guys don't want to, probably don't even want to phone home. But, uh... but it's hard to keep a good man down. And so last night, a show premiered that won't run until next year. Number 99, Dan Hampton became a disc jock on US 99, a country marriage with football talk. It seemed like after that uh, Walter Payton fumble, it seemed like the defense went pretty, pretty flat. You know, I, I hate to think that a lot of people are going to remember Walter this year for that fumble because, God, he's done so much for the team. But, you know, yeah, I know what your question is, and it's, it's hard to really get off from that because looking back at the game, it's almost like the defense really, you know, deflated after that certain turnover. And, uh, you know, that, that shouldn't happen. Of course not. But why is this happening? Well, it seems Dan, an Arkansas boy, is the Bears' country music guru. I, I really like the swarming music, and... Uh, like I said, uh, I've got a lot of favorites. Maybe I can play a few. Losing wouldn't be so bad at all. But I'm always on a mountain when I fall. U.S. 99 saying we with Dan Hampton of the Chicago Bears. We'll be back next year for sure. Jeannie Morris, Channel 2 Sports. Dan Hampton. And finally, for a change of pace, I talked with Miss USA today, Christine Fitchner. A unique attraction on the cover of this week's Inside Sports magazine. Inside Sports usually usually uses a celebrity on their cover, and mm -hmm. they wanted to do something a little different this year, and they decided on a title holder, and luckily it was me this year, so I'm very fortunate. And it was, I imagine it was a lot of fun, or they say, hey, modeling is, is it's not as easy as you think it is for pictures and stuff. Well, actually, I was a very good candidate for this because mm. I'd been with Ford in mm. New York for six years. I've mm -hmm. modeled all over the world. That's what I did before I entered pageants. And uh, I also was a competitive swimmer and diver growing up, so I'm very used to the water and uh, swimming and bathing suits. And I also am very proud of my 9.6 bathing suit scoring in mm -hmm. the bathing suit competition of the pageant. So it's really right up my alley. And, of course, sports being up your alley, too, uh, you kind of follow sports, don't you? Yes, very much. Uh, oh. I shouldn't mention that I'm a Cowboys fan <laughs> while I'm here in Chicago, but I, I'm also a Chicago fan. I'll bet she is, being from Dallas, Texas. <laughs> now, uh, she is a sports fan. She was a, actually a, a uh, collegiate swimmer and diver. So, 
Well, it would be a shame, wouldn't it? Can I add my two cents? Sure. Think of Walter Payton only in terms of that fumble. I mean, Bill was just saying, I agree. I've never seen a guy, he really a guy got hit, hit like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he really got hit on that. Uh, it's been unfortunate for Walter. He's had the, all these, these last couple of years, great years, and he didn't get that touchdown in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl. And this year he comes up with a fumble, but he'll... How much have you had to readjust your plans? Uh, now well, we had, a whole, uh, we had a whole half-hour special with Dan Hampton on the Junkyard Dogs uh, that was scheduled to play this coming week. But uh, it was all predicated on the gamble <laughs> that the Washington uh, Redskins would lose to the Chicago Bears. It didn't work out that way. It's really kind of a shame because the special now is outdated, but it was terrific. And Hampton was great. I wish you could have all seen it. Yeah, we'll take a lot of work went it. into it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Johnny. That's our news tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Good night.